What did the father of cytogenetics say when his sister stepped on his foot? Ow, my toe, sis. Hi everyone. If you've not already guessed, today we're going to be talking about mitosis. Mitosis is one of the stages of the cell cycle, and a cell must undergo all of the cell cycle in order to replicate. The cell cycle takes roughly just over a day to complete and is composed of four distinct phases. When a cell exits the quiescent or dormant state where it's not replicating, or otherwise known as G0, the cell then enters G1, followed by the synthesis phase, then G2, and then finally the M phase, composed of mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis describes the process of nuclear division, while cytokinesis, cyto meaning cell and kinesis meaning movement, is the process describing cellular division. So let's have a look at mitosis itself. Of all of these pretty lines and confusing images, we've got mitosis in the center. Preceding mitosis is interphase. Interphase describing all of the phases that come before that. That includes G1, S, and G2. And after mitosis or nuclear division comes cytokinesis, which is cellular division. Let's have a closer look at the process of mitosis. This can be split into five distinct stages. The first one being prophase. Following is prometaphase, otherwise known as late prophase. They're interchangeable. Following prometaphase is then metaphase, after which is anaphase, and then lastly, telophase. Before we take a closer look at what happens within each of these phases, let's identify some cellular components that will help us understand what's actually going on. Here, I've got two images of cells in different stages of the cell cycle. Firstly, on the left, we have interphase, which is G1, S, and G2. And on the right is an image depicting a cell in prophase, which is the first stage of mitosis. First, we'll just label the cell membrane in which all our cellular components are enclosed within. On the left in the interphase cell, we have DNA strands, so this is double the normal amount of genetic material that we would see in a quiescent cell. In prophase, you will then see that this DNA is further condensed into recognizable chromosomes. Next up, we can also then label the centrosomes. So that's what I'm drawing over on the left hand side. Please note that there are two of them and these were re replicated during interphase. On the right, you'll see that there are microtubules coming out of the centrosomes. And lastly, we'll just label the nuclear envelope because this comes and goes during mitosis. A little bit more labeling before we move on to the stages of mitosis. Let's take a closer look at the chromosome. The chromosome is composed of two sister chromatids, each chromatid being either the left or the right half of what we're seeing here, attached at the centrosome, which we'll label in a second. Just a small reference to the terrible joke that we've inserted at the start of the video. If they're sisters and siblings, yes, there will be some toe stepping that's happening. Anyway, so we've got two sister chromatids. Each sister chromatid will have a short and a long arm. The short arm is denoted by the letter P in lowercase, and the long arm denoted by the letter Q also in lowercase. This helps us more specifically identify regions on a chromosome. Furthermore, to then label some specific regions on the chromatids together making up the chromosome. The regions found on the very ends are called the telomeres, and the region in the center where the two chromatids are attached is called the centromere. An even more specific region within the centromere, denoted in green here, is called the kinetochore. The kinetochore, which I kind of remember as the core of kinetics, is where the microtubules must stably attach before the end of metaphase and anaphase is allowed to occur. Coming from the centrosome are microtubules, and these microtubules will blindly reach out, attach and reattach, until a stable connection is established with the kinetochore on the same side. 
The correct formation of the microtubule kinetochore complex successfully signals and fulfills the spindle assembly checkpoint. And when this checkpoint is fulfilled, mitosis is allowed to continue and therefore the cell is pushed out of metaphase and into anaphase. Okay, I think we know the basics of the cell. I think it's time to look at the stages of mitosis in a little bit more detail. Preceding mitosis is G1, the S phase, and G2, otherwise known as interphase. Here we can see during interphase, we have double the genetic material of a normal somatic cell. Furthermore, we can also see that there are two centrosomes. These centrosomes are also replicated during interphase, preparing us for mitosis. Then moving on to the first stage of mitosis. Let's do it. We have prophase. During prophase, we can see that there are two sets of genetic material, but this time we can see that they're condensed into chromosomes. We'll also note that in prophase, the nuclear envelope is still intact and the genetic material here in the form of chromosomes is still very much contained. Another thing to note is the migration and the location of the centrosomes. The centrosomes during prophase begin to move to opposite ends of the cell. Here you can call them spindle poles and the two spindle poles on opposite ends help dictate the direction of nuclear and cellular division. And lastly, having a look at what's coming out of the centrosomes, these green strands are the microtubules and the centrosomes are responsible for nucleating and elongating the microtubules to prepare us for the next phase, which is prometaphase or late prophase. During late prophase or prometaphase, the first thing we can see that is that the nuclear envelope is no longer intact. The disintegration of the nuclear envelope means the microtubules are free to try to attach to the genetic material or the chromosomes. Furthermore, you'll see that these microtubules are much longer than they were in prophase, and that's because the centrosomes have continued to nucleate and elongate these. During prometaphase, these microtubules randomly and haphazardly attach to the chromosomes. For example, it will attach to the long arm or the short arm or the opposite centromere, and these will then unattach and reattach until finally a successful microtubule kinetical complex is formed, whereby a microtubule from the corresponding spindle pole attaches stably to the kinetochore of a sister chromatid. When microtubules from each spindle pole attach to the appropriate sister chromatid and apply equal tension, this pulls the chromosomes into an equatorial plate, which is called the metaphase plate. And this lines up the chromosomes in the center of the cell, roughly equal distance between the two spindle poles. The appearance of the metaphase plate signifies the phase metaphase. And during this phase, the centrosomes are also fully migrated to perfectly opposite ends of the pole to prepare us for the next phase. Anaphase, the next phase, can only occur if the checkpoint within mitosis is fulfilled, the spindle assembly checkpoint. The spindle assembly checkpoint requires all microtubules to be stably attached to its respective kinetochore. If this is the case, then the spindle assembly checkpoint is fulfilled and anaphase is allowed to occur. This is to ensure that there is equal division and segregation of the genetic material. Once the spindle assembly checkpoint is fulfilled, we move on to anaphase. And during anaphase, we can see two segregating masses of chromosomes because the sister chromatids have been cleaved at the centromere and each one is pulled towards its respective spindle pole. This pulling occurs via shortening of the microtubules. Thus, applying tension on the stable microtubule kinetochore complex and pulling the genetic material towards its destined daughter cell. After anaphase, after successful separation of the sister chromatids and equal segregation of the genetic material, comes telophase, the last phase of mitosis. 
During telophase, the nuclear envelope is re-established to then contain the genetic material once again. Additionally, the two centrosomes remain on opposite ends of the cell to further act as directional poles for cellular division. After telophase, whereby the equal genetic material has been successfully segregated and contained within its nuclear envelope, it's time to move on to cytokinesis. Cytokinesis describes the cellular division as contained within the cytoplasm of the cell, from the one parent cell, hopefully equally to the two daughter cells. Furthermore, we can see that there is a formation of a cleavage furrow, which is a result of a contractile ring closing in to then basically split apart the parent cell into its two equal daughter cells. And hopefully, after what we end up with, going through all of the cell cycle into phase G1, S, G2, then followed by mitosis and followed by cytokinesis, we end up with two identical daughter cells. Here, we can see that the cells contain the appropriate amount of genetic material for a normal somatic cell, and also it contains just the one centrosome. Depending on the needs of the environment and the stimuli the cell receives, the cell can re-enter the cell cycle from cytokinesis straight into G1 to continue another round through the cell cycle. However, if the cell, like you, are just so done and don't want any more of this, the cell can then re-enter a quiescent or dormant state called G0. And that's it. That's mitosis condensed into a short video. I say condensed because like the genetic material gets condensed into chromosomes. Anyway, and on that note, I hope you learned something and we will see you next time.